Hello everyone, it's Michelle Patterson here with Angel Souls and today I'm going to be talking about how to get a personal reading with me and what my process is. Now that is something that I don't typically talk about, but we're going to get into it here. Number one, if you have decided to get a reading with me, you need to know the difference between an angelic reading and a psychic reading, okay? Psychic readings depends on the reader, of course, but they typically take a timestamp on where you are right now in your energy and what one of the potential trajectories would be given your choices right now. The thing is though, that you have free will, okay? So someone could give you a beautiful psychic reading, right? And then you go out and you make different choices or you don't heed the advice that came in. Well, now you're gonna have a different outcome, okay? And psychic readings, again, not always, it just depends on the reader, but a lot of people do tend to approach it just with the surface level issue that you're asking about. With an angelic reading, we go deep, okay? We don't just look at the surface, and that's fine, you can ask surface level questions, but just be ready for us to go deep into why that's happening. <laughs> What's the deeper pattern? Um, you know, what kind of guidance do your angels want you to know? What do they wanna bring forward that you are missing, that you're not picking up for yourself, okay? Your angels can also sort of introduce themselves through an angelic reading. So if you are going to choose to go that route, you're gonna get the answers to your questions, but it's going to be very empowering. It's going to empower you to make your own choices, yes? Because you are free will beings. I once heard someone say to me, I don't know if this person was an angel medium, but they said to me, angels are incredibly predictive. They always tell you the future. That is not true. <laughs> and be careful if somebody tells you that because that's a psychic reading. One of the main rules that angels go by is that they do not interfere with your free will, okay? Unless it's an emergency, <laughs> right? But they're not gonna tell you how to live your life. They're great teachers. So they're gonna give you the study guide. They're not gonna give you the answers to the test, right? So they're gonna guide you along. They're gonna help you. And you're gonna walk out of there going, okay, I know what to work on now, or I know what direction to go in, or maybe you come out of the angel reading, this happens too. I, in the beginning of every personal reading, I tell people to have a pen and paper handy to write down everything you have resistance to, or anything that doesn't make sense in the moment. Because we're tapping into this higher frequency, sometimes it takes a little bit for us to process before it makes sense, and sometimes things have to play out. <laughs> and I'll have clients come back six months later and go, oh my gosh, you know, I was ready to dismiss that in the beginning when I heard it, and then here it is, because I didn't see how things were going to be playing out. That's not future telling, that's not fortune telling, that is, you know, the angels coming in trying to work with you to get you prepped, okay? Again, they're gonna guide you, <laughs> right? The other thing is, this is your personal reading, so everything pertains to you. I have had people say, well, it mostly resonated. Well, if you, if you walk away from listening to your reading and you have that feeling about it, go back and listen to it again because there are things that you are either resisting or you're just, you need to, like I said before, you just need to let it sit for a little bit. So knowing that if you still choose to do a reading, I do them digitally, which means you go in, you read, <laughs> make sure you read everything, okay? Read what you're agreeing to. You choose which time frame you want. You know, it's a safe bet to factor one question per 15 minutes. So I have a 15 minute reading, I have a 30 minute reading, I have a 60 minute reading. So, you know, if you get a 15 minute reading, we're not going to address 20 questions. We're just not gonna have time unless we just, you know, lightly hit on everything. So just keep that in mind. And I have that listed out with all the price points. The wait time is 20 days, okay? So within that 20 day wait time, I typically ask people to not keep checking up on your reading. That really interrupts the flow. It really interrupts what I'm trying to do for people who, you know, it's their day. It's their turn to get their reading. So essentially what I do, I'll get into this a little bit more later on. I tune in and I use a digital voice recorder and just, I know, I'll even show you my little recorder. <laughs> Nothing fancy. I record your reading and I email it to you. Yes. So that's why it is so important that when you choose what reading you want to fill out the form, there's a form that pops up immediately. Some people overlook it and that's fine. <laughs> if ever that should happen, there is, the form is under the thank you tab on my website. So please do not wait, purchase your reading, 
then fill out the form. Here's why I ask for that form. Number one, this now holds your place in line. If I get you a reading and you didn't submit a form, I can't do your reading, right? I don't know what you want to know, right? I don't know what I'm tuning in for. So I will typically skip over those readings and move on to the next person. And then you lost your place in line. When you do get me the form, I will just have to fit you in wherever. And the 20 day wait time is off now. Okay. So just be aware of that. On that submission form, I ask for a few things and maybe some people have some questions about that. I ask for your name, your birth date, and that, I'm not an astrologer, but um, I do like to have your sun sign just, you know, to have kind of a guidance on how to communicate with you. Like I'm going to communicate with a Cancerian a little bit differently than I will a Capricorn, <laughs> right? I mean, again, that's being overly simplistic. Not everything is based on the sun sign, but you know, um, I like to have that information. I also ask for people's gender. And this is one of those things where, you know, people get into this whole psychic reading thing. Well, shouldn't you just know what I am? I'm not doing psychic readings here. And even if I were, you know, I mean, here's the thing. Souls have no gender. They have no gender. Okay. So in addition, when that piece of your soul decides to incarnate, we all, whether we express as male, female, however you identify, you have male and female traits within you. So when I'm trying to connect into that, if you're really, really balanced, I don't know if you're a man or a woman. <laughs> or maybe you might, you know, in my mind, I see what would physically be described as a man, but maybe you don't identify as male. Do you know what I'm saying? So I want to be respectful. I want to make sure that I am you know, addressing people with the pronouns that they are comfortable with, because that's the idea. You know, we want you to feel safe listening to this reading. Also, I've had, <laughs> I had an instance uh, in the past where someone came to me, they had a gender neutral name, very even energy. So there was both masculine and feminine. I think at that time, 90% of my audience was female. So I thought, I just used like female pronouns and it was actually a man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's just avoid all that. And remember, I'm going into a deep soul level energy. So let me know how you want to be addressed. Of course, I ask for an email. So, you know, the email that you provide, it has to be able to take an MP3. I haven't had really an issue with that recently, but back when I first started Angel Souls, people would have these email addresses that had all these blocks on them or they were trying to use their, their work email, you know, it was like really, really big security on those. And I couldn't get their reading to them. And, you know, it's up to you to make sure you have an email address that can take an MP3. Now, that could be Gmail, that could be Hotmail, if you still use Hotmail. <laughs> it can be Yahoo, I don't usually have a problem with Yahoo, you know, something along those lines. Now, when you get your reading, again, remember, it's gonna be a 20 day wait time. We'll talk about that here a little bit. <laughs> well, cause I wanna let you in on a little secret and this kind of goes into the process. When it is your turn to receive your reading, I send you an email with the MP3 link, okay? A link to the MP3 file. It's not that difficult, you click on it. We need to address this too, because Google has made some changes and I share permissions when I send it, but people keep asking for access. So um, on my end, it keeps showing up and 99% of my clients don't have a problem. They just click on it, it opens. But every once in a while, somebody has to request access. Um, I don't know what is happening on everyone's devices, but worst case, I just hit access again and send it back to you and it shouldn't be a problem. Remember that link that you are hitting that is accessing my drive and my files and with all these privacy laws in effect I will be erasing your reading. So I say in the beginning of every you know voice recording that you know you have to immediately download and save your reading to your computer. It's not enough to save the email with the link because I'm going to be erasing it. So get that pulled off the drive, save it somewhere safe. I also send you a photo of the cards. So when you pop open the voicemail or the voicemail, <laughs> when you pop open the MP3, which is a voice recording, that's what I meant to say. When you pop open the voice recording, you know, it's going to be a little bit of a rundown of some business, right? Like light a candle, have that pen and paper, save your reading, you know, all that good stuff. And then we get into it. All right. And then you can look at the photograph while while you're listening. Okay. A few practical things that just in my time doing this that I've discovered, it doesn't work. Um, 
Again, don't reach out before the due date, okay? That wastes a lot of time. But also, if you don't have your reading by the morning of day 21, something happened, okay? I've never been late on a reading except for one time, and that was when PayPal was, uh, that was when I was going off my PayPal list. That's why I had to change. <laughs> um, PayPal was going through some sort of upgrade or change or it glitched. I don't know what happened, but this person didn't show up in my list initially. I had to run a whole other list to see that they were there. They contacted me on the morning of day 21. Of course, I apologized. I got on it right away and it was fine. So if you don't have your reading again by you know the 21st day, always reach out to me because that means something happened, okay? And I will make sure I remedy it and get it taken care of. So there is that. The little snafu that I've run into that I would advise a lot of you to make sure that you do not do, do not wait to contact me to let me know that you didn't get your reading, okay? I've had people wait two months, three months to come back and say, hey, I got a reading way back when, I never got it. It might be erased by then, okay? And once it's gone, it's gone. And I do have a no refund policy. I have to put that in place to protect me and to protect my business. So once you make that request, you know, the only way you might get a refund is if, you know, for whatever reason, I, like I did give a refund to a woman one time because I didn't think that she was ready for one. I know that sounds a little crazy, but she needed to do some meditating to get her energy in a place so that she could hear the messages. And I, it didn't feel ethical to take her money. <laughs> so in that case, I gave it back to her and I said, hey, go off and work with this archangel, work on this stuff first, and then come back. If you feel like you still want a reading from me, come on back and we'll take care of you. But you know, that was an instance where that wasn't gonna work. You know what I'm saying? So be very mindful that you actually want the reading, be respectful of the wait time, know what you're getting into, that you're getting an MP3. These are not in person. I do that for many, many reasons. And actually we should talk about that. Um, and please make sure that you save your reading. If you don't have it by day 21, make sure you get in touch with me immediately. Okay. Now, not doing them in person. People are so shook by that. They're just so shook. They're like, how do you not, or how do you not do them in person? Because how can you tune into my energy? Well, I don't know how I tune into your energy. I just do. And I do it well, if I may say. <laughs> I do it a lot better this way than when I'm sitting across from somebody. You know, first of all, it's not it's not uh, convenient for anybody involved to have to schedule out readings. And I have clients in every time zone all over the world. Can you imagine if I did them even via Skype or Zoom or something like that? I would have a six month waiting period just trying to schedule everybody out and then having people not show up and that, you know what I'm saying? And having to deal with the time zones and there being miscommunication. And it's just, <laughs> trust me, it's safer for me and it's more convenient, I think, for my clients. Also, I don't have, because I'm not sitting there in front of you, you're not going to have the pressure of keeping a nice face on if something comes up that you didn't want to hear. And I'm not going to be so close to your energy that I can feel you doubting right? Because that's interference. So that leads us into, if you want to get the most out of this reading, you have to be open. So if you come into it with fear, or weirdly, I get a lot of skeptics who want to come in and try <laughs> this out and see what it's like. I'm going to let you read for me. You ain't letting me read for you, okay? This is what I do for a living. <laughs> like, you know, make sure you're open. But you know, I I, I'm kind of flattered that the skeptics, you know, they could choose anybody and they came and, you know, chose one of my readings. Thank you. Um, but if you're closed off, you know, I, I tune into your energy and I'm listening to guides and angels, you know, and archangels. I mostly, mostly archangels. But, um, you know, if you're, you know, if you're trying to test me or if you're one of those people, this isn't bad necessarily, but you'll just get more out of the reading if you're clear and concise on what you want, okay? What's the question? And let me, you know, pose that question to the angels and archangels and let's see what comes through. If you wanna get a general reading, you can always do that too. There's nothing wrong with that. But I've had people come to me and go, well, if you're psychic, you should just know. Uh, really? Is that what you wanna put your money into or do you wanna give me a focus 
so that we can <laughs> get a focused answer as opposed to me sitting here trying to guess the details of your life that you already know. Do you just need that validation or do we want to do some real work? It's your choice, all right? But if you're somebody who, you know, you treat these readings like entertainment, this is not the place for you. This is definitely not the place for you. We do real soul level work and that's why I asked for the form. That's why I asked that, you know, certain uh, things, uh, certain cooperation happens, right? To keep things flowing, to keep it efficient, to make sure we can get readings to everybody, but also so that when I am tuning in and doing your reading, we have a very concise focus. I know what I'm dealing with and I can help interpret that. Okay. I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't leave comments down below. Um, if you're watching this on my website you can go over to my YouTube channel or email me or something if you have questions. If these are really in-depth questions, maybe sometimes, <laughs> you know, I mean, if it's a question about a reading, I'm happy to answer that. But people seem to think that that means it's open season to ask personal questions about them that requires a reading. So just be careful with that, okay? Having said that, here's the part where I'm going to let you in on some secrets. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> One of the things about my process is that I do readings often. And what that means is if I've already done the readings I'm going to do for the day, but maybe, maybe there was a little lapse where I didn't get any requests for a couple of days, I'm going to jump ahead and keep, you know, keep on top of those readings. So that means that you could potentially, there's no guarantee, but you could potentially get your reading early. There have been times where I'm getting ready to travel and I've been working around the clock getting uh, readings together and maybe you pop one in and I've got, you gave me a 15 minute request, I've got 20 minutes before I have to leave for the airport. <laughs> Tune in, let's do this, let's get this sent off. Now again, I know that can be confusing for clients because, wait, you're saying I could have it by the next day or I could have it from 20, you know, 20 days from now. It really just depends on your fellow humans, okay? And how many people are coming in? I've had, <laughs> good Lord, I've had days where 25 reading requests came in all in the same day. And then I've had lapses where it's been, you know, me twiddling my thumbs, waiting for somebody to come on in and ask for guidance. So, you know, and readings aren't the only things that I do. Obviously I do videos, I edit my own videos, everything's on me <laughs> and I don't have a team that's helping me out. So um, that's why I ask, you know, I said this before, but you know, just to really drive it home, that's why I ask that you immediately put that form in because if I can get to your reading sooner, I want to have all the tools there to do that, right? It also makes you miss your place in line if I get to you and it's not there. Okay. So there's that. My process, what does that look like? Well, I sit in my studio. Every morning I get up and I meditate for myself to cleanse, to clear, to have, you know, a good setup for the day. And then I always have a leisurely breakfast. These are details you did not care about, but I'm going to tell you anyway, <laughs> that is me time. Breakfast time is me time with my good cup of coffee. I don't check emails, you know, forget that noise. I'm going to, I'm going to have my eggs and my coffee, right? So I do that. And then I will typically, you know, that's when I start checking emails and I get set up for the day. So I see who's in line next. I line them up for that day. I cross check to see if they've made a payment. I try to put a lot of safeguards in place to make sure nobody gets overlooked and to make sure everything goes smoothly. You know, I do my best on this end. Um, and then I get my recorder ready. I get my computer sitting right here. I light my candles. And sometimes if I feel like I won't even read people's submission page until I'm getting ready to do their reading. But sometimes I feel like, you know what, we need to have some quartz crystal. Um, someone, I have a feeling today's going to be a big, love. I don't have a piece of rose quartz near me. I don't think, no, I don't. Um, but if I feel like it's going to be a big love day, I might pull some love crystals. I get my candles set. If I feel like I've had a stressful time, then I will sage or, you know, what have you. I get the space nice and clean get everything ready, I clear out the cards, I breathe and I meditate. <laughs> Before I even, you know, look at the first client, I breathe, get all tuned in, and then I read, or well, I look at the person's name and some of their info, I actually read while I'm recording, and the reason why I do that and part of my process is that I was discovering, it's two things, one is practical, one is for tuning in, but um, the tuning in part is while I'm reading, they could be answering while I'm reading. Yes. So I like to go through and do that. 
it was also kind of an issue with people sending me huge long email attachments that were pages and pages long and they got a 15 minute reading and they really expected me to read you know these five pages in a word document and then start their reading we're not doing that okay i'm not spending 20 minutes to read your questions to do a 15 minute reading so you know if you are a fellow reader i would encourage you to do that as well you know don't read the stuff ahead of time it, you know go into where the time is because i don't know if it's helpful but I find that they chatter with me as I'm reading it, <laughs> as I said, and you're, you know, you can be a little more efficient in your lineup for a day, right? So that's when I, you know, I hit record on the recorder. I'm reading someone's submission, you know, and I give them whatever is coming up. Sometimes you will hear me get quiet. It is not the reading cutting out. It's just me tuning in. <laughs> um, sometimes, uh, this is something, you know, again, this is just something I should just warn you about. Sometimes you'll hear me go, <sighs> I'm sorry. I know it's weird. It's totally weird. It feels weird, but you know, the frequency is getting really, really high. And for me to keep matching it, I got to breathe. And sometimes I got to breathe <laughs> deeply, right? To stay in that. So, and sometimes too, you know, when I have people who come in and maybe, you know, maybe they're in a lot of fear or something like that. Um, that it could be a, a big energy colliding with this angelic energy. And I, you know, I have to keep centered and that's why I do that. But yeah, if you hear me, <laughs> suddenly I'm talking and then I cut out, as I said, you know, that's me listening. But I also will sometimes stumble over my words. That's just me being inarticulate sometimes. But other times that is seriously like my mouth is trying to go and I'm hearing, I'm clear audience, I'm uh, clear cognizant, excuse me, clear cognizant, <laughs> clear sentient, uh, clairvoyant and uh, clear audience. They say that already? I don't know. I got some clairs, okay? I got some clairs going on for me. But anyway, I can hear messages coming through and I'm trying to talk and I'm like, I do it. Yeah. So you'll get like a mashup of words sometimes. I hope you find it charming because <laughs> I don't know how to work around that and still be authentic and trying to give you your reading. Uh, another thing about my approach, I do not coddle people. And so if that is something that, you know, if you have a very, very uh, delicate ego, if you're getting a reading just to be told how wonderful you are or that you're special because you're from planet Nubu or whatever, um, and that your journey is harder than anybody else's, you're not going to get that here. You're not going to get that here. If, you know, we could talk about aspects of your soul, but we don't feed egos here. <laughs> there, there's no food at the zoo for the ego, okay? The ego's not necessarily bad, but... Um, you know, I, I think that you should be well informed before you make your investment about what you're going to get. I've had people who were coming from that perspective. Again, I've been doing this for years now. And so I've learned a few things and people would often be disappointed. I had a woman who was disappointed that it wasn't in person and she actually got quite angry, even though it was listed on my website very, very clearly that this would be an email reading. Okay. And I know that doesn't sound that special, but trust me, we can get a lot into 15 minutes. We can get a lot into a half hour <laughs> because there's no, like I said, there's no pressure for you to agree with or negate or whatever. I can just stay in the channel and keep going. Okay. And I should mention this too. It's mostly channel. And then we do some cards at the end. Yes. All right. So other things, you know, I've had clients come to me and they, you know, wanted, they just saw it as fun and games. And then when we went in deep and we hit on some of the things that they needed to know about themselves, that was very startling for them. I don't think, I, I wouldn't deliver a message if I didn't think they were ready to hear it. But, you know, that ego's in there going, this is supposed to be fun. This is supposed to be fun. Oh, wait, this isn't fun. I don't want to talk about my childhood. Oh, wait, <laughs> I don't want to talk about this, that, or the other. And then they get upset and they go away, right? So I don't want people doing that. I want people here who are ready to dive in, to look at things. Again, you can ask like, Michelle, why the heck do I keep dating the same kind of person? I love those questions because it's, it's genius. And it shows that you are, you're ready to break a pattern when you acknowledge it like that. So that's wonderful. Or why do I get stuck in my job? Or what are some potentials? Or where can I, you know, we can always start there, but we're going to go deeper. Okay, so some questions that might not be all that appropriate for an angel reading, um, trying to invade someone else's psyche, we don't do that. 
We don't invade people's free will choices. And I'll talk a little bit about that here in just a moment. Um, I had a client one time, basically, I mean, it was the equivalent of wanting the winning lotto numbers. You come to me with that and you're choosing after knowing all of this, after I tell you all this, and you still choose to get a reading, we're not going to give you the winning lotto numbers. We're going to discuss why you feel you need the winning lotto numbers, okay? <laughs> we're going to look at that. What's the big why behind this, okay? So there's that. Again, you know, my approach as a reader, uh, if I tune into your energy and maybe you're fearful, or maybe you're a skeptic and you're kind of closed off. Um, I don't go peeking behind the curtain. If you put a curtain up, I might acknowledge in the reading, okay, I feel like there's something around parents or something, but there, there's a block there, there's a curtain, there's a door. That is my indication that you wanna keep that private. And I always 100% respect that. I will not go digging, I will not. So as I said, you know, the, the, so you might be going, now, wait a minute, Michelle, you said there are people that came in, then you went kind of deep. Well, these people, you know, that there's a different thing. And hang with me here as I explain this. If somebody comes in willy nilly and they're like, I'm an open book. I you tell me anything. And you're like, well, how about that thing? And then they hurry up and close the door. Like you weren't supposed to see that. What the heck? You know, that's different than somebody who comes in and they're like, I want to know about, you know, my, my friendship patterns for example, but don't talk about that one friendship. I can't, I can't go there right now. You may not even be aware, or maybe you are, I don't know, but um, wherever there's like extreme pain where it's too sensitive, it will come to me, like I said, like a curtain over it or uh, there's a door closed and that's fine. It doesn't mean that we can't at some point work on it to pull that curtain back and look at that. It just means not today. The angels also have a symbol when I'm working with them and not a symbol, but an action that they do with me when we're talking about an issue or something. And I'll see, oh, there's something over here that has a big block around it. I might mention the block, but, and I'll keep talking until they put, they'll put a hand over my chest and they'll kind of move me back. And that's when I know, don't talk about it anymore. The person is at capacity, okay? So we say just what needs to be said and nothing more. Now, if you choose to come back to me later on to go deeper into what might have been a block before, we can kind of test it. Now, I can't control what comes up. And also, we have to, we don't know what we're up against. It's almost like, it's weirdly like a surgeon. Like a surgeon doesn't really know. They can run tests and stuff, but they don't really know what they're up against until they get into surgery, right? Same kind of thing when we're tuning in spiritually. We don't really know what we're going to be up against, but we can always look at it. And you're always going to get something out of these readings. If you make that choice and you make that investment with me, you're going to get something. Now, I have had some clients who have gotten very codependent with me. This hasn't happened really in the past few years, it was like kind of back in the beginning. Uh, I will refuse clients who, you know, sometimes if you want to keep coming back and maybe you want clarification on something, uh, maybe we touched on it and you're like, okay, well, I'm ready to hear more on that. Always recap what we already talked about because the angels will just like <laughs> everything. Time is different. For, time is not linear for the angels. So when you come in and you ask a question, you want deeper, they'll start recapping all the stuff that maybe we've already gone over. We as humans, we don't like that, right? <laughs> we don't want to hear it again, nor should you have to pay for that. So if you do ask for a follow-up question, just remind me like, okay, we've already covered this territory. I'll have that in my human brain. And so when those messages are coming up again, I'll be like, okay, well, we already covered that. What else? And that gives me a chance to kind of go to the angels and go, okay, what else? What else? What else? And to go deeper. Another thing that is not really appropriate for an angel reading, we touched on this before, but coming in and saying, I want to know what that person feels about me. Me as a reader, I will not dive into other people's souls without their permission. Now, what I can pick up on if their energy is open and they don't mind if somebody sees something, I can offer that. Or I can offer how their energy affects yours. We can address that. But trying to dive into someone's mind and, you know, I know there are readers out there who do that. Actually, I think it's common for um, at least what I've seen, uh, you know, some psychic readers to dive in and to do that. I will not. Okay. It's not ethical. I don't think for me, it's not ethical to do that. 
Now, when we talk in terms of, and we're coming up to the holiday season, and thank you so much to everybody, by the way, who, <laughs> that you give my readings as a gift to people. That is so beautiful. Thank you so much. But when we're doing that, you know, we really have to be careful. It might be better to, you know, tell the person that you're gifting here, I'm going to pay for a reading for you and allow them to come in and submit. Now, I have done it in the past where someone came in, they wanted to do a surprise reading, they wanted the reading presented to that person at a certain date and time, I don't do that, okay? I literally had a client who wanted me to do a reading for someone and to deliver it on Sunday at a certain time. So I'm sitting here, you know, halfway across the world having to figure out what time it is to remember that? No, I'm gonna send it to you and then you can remember to give it to that person on their birthday. But again, the whole idea, the, the reason why I even did those readings was because I already knew that, that person wanted a reading, right? Either they were a past client of mine or you know they've expressed some interest in that. Um, some other things that are a little inappropriate, I think, with readings, especially angel readings, um, it kind of goes along that same vein of trying to dive into someone else's soul. I have sometimes parents come to me and they say, my, you know, my child is messing up life. They're messing up life. And they sometimes don't say, well, what can I do to help them? Right? They come in and go, will you please tell her or him that they need to move back home? Will you please tell him or her? Just tell them. And they're coming in and dictating what, like they're almost using this to be, <laughs> to manipulate their, no, we're not doing that. We're absolutely not doing that. So again, there's some ethical things going on here that we have to work around, um, you know, but just be careful in what you're asking for and be ready to go deep. Be ready to get on in there. And remember, you know, we're not, I, I don't approach readings like a tyrant, but as I said before, I do not coddle, okay? So maybe some tough love at times. It depends on who it is. I will always communicate in the manner that I'm guided to to get the message to you. So if that means it has to be blunt, it's going to be blunt. If you come to me and I feel like you're really, really raw, and if I'm blunt with you, you will shut down just because you're in so much pain, we're not gonna be blunt with you, okay? We might, we'll get our point across in another way. So I hope that clarifies things for you a little bit, and I hope that you can see now how special an angel reading is. And if you're open to it, when you're listening, you can always have an angel experience yourself, but you do need to be in a calm, peaceful, sort of elevated space in order to perceive your angels as you are listening, okay? So we're gonna leave it there, guys. If you have further questions for me, don't hesitate to ask. I'm sending you so much love. Thank you for your support and take care.